So, yeah. all right. Come on, man. Take those off. What's what's wrong okay, with you? Okay, all, right. all right. I didn't know you wanted me to talk. Oh, 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 oh you mean no. the glasses. Yeah, the, <laughs> yes, the glasses. Okay. Place. Right. Oh, Roscoe Tanner's watching. Yeah. He's Hi, a, Roscoe. Roscoe's a fan. Saw yes. you at Stanford, man. That's You're good. awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Yeah. So I'm here. This is like so rare that I get to have the in in person interview sitting right next to the guest, and here it is. Here he is, the man, the myth, the legend, David Crane. But you know what? He is not a legend in his own estimation. But I have determined that he is. Mm. David, how are you doing today? I'm good, thanks. Good to That's have good. you here. That's yeah. good. And you know what? It is so nice to be here in lovely Eagle. Idaho with you. What a great walk we had this morning, right? Right, right on the Boise River on the Idaho Greenbelt. It's beautiful. Okay. Yeah. So one of the things, so we've been talking about a lot of different things and people, and I think the number one thing we want to get into are stories because people learn really well from, from stories of interacting with different players. And I think the, I think the player I want you to highlight first is uh, Dmitry Terzanov, right? Because you had a chance to work with him, and and there was this interaction with the family. Yes. Right. Yes. So why don't yes. you why don't, let's let's dig into a little bit about your relationship with Dmitry and and how maybe that helped him become who he is. Well, yeah, you've got to establish the timeline to go back almost twenty years, um, and and it was right about the time my son Shannon, who's now a sophomore at Boise State was born and we were living in Sunnyvale Mountain View and I was teaching for Sean Abdullahi Alahi uh, Tennis Academy and Sean pretty much basically brought me in because we had an international crew uh, mostly Russian coaches and himself he was a Persian uh, young man and they hired me for my communication skills and I spoke really good English oh and I had to do a, 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 a once a week a Thursday um, group class with old timers and now I'm an old timer uh, uh -huh. and Sean and the Russian coaches didn't want to do that so that got me in the door and then I started working with these players and we had international players from all over the world and there was a young uh, red-headed boy and uh, his name was Dimitri and I got a chance to look at him and he was an amazing amazing young man but he had a bit of a temper and one day while we were training on the upper courts at uh, Oak Ridge Apartments in Mountain View uh, he lost his temper and he threw his racket bag <laughs> off the top of the uh, building where we were training at the time and it landed in somebody's car. And the Russian coaches got really, really upset with him. And one of the coaches, I can't mention his name, and I don't know right. if this was in jest or he would just totally had it with Dimitri. He went and grabbed him. He was just only 12 years old. And the other coach was really big and grabbed him to throw him off that roof and I said no, uh -huh. no no we can't do this it's, it's called manslaughter so I, yeah, I separated yeah. him and, and make a long story short I got to meet Dimitri's mom his dad was back in in, uh, in Moscow and wasn't able to make the trip and it was during a time uh, during the dot-con boom when we were trying to house and host all these young international players it was really difficult a one-bedroom apartment in those days was going for three four thousand a month mm. it was just so expensive so we i had a chat with his mom and and he had some difficulties as a young man and we volunteered to kind of look after Dimitri for a while. Okay, so I'm going to jump in for a second because I I saw it from a different view because the, the juniors that I was coaching would go and play these tournaments where Dimitri was and they would just get manhandled. And, I, and then I was trying to like problem solve this for them. I'm like, well, he certainly has a weakness somewhere. Mm -hmm. and, and they would come back to me and they go, coach, you just don't understand. You just don't understand. He's like a man among boys. I mean, yes. coach, his he's got a 130 mile an hour serve. You know, <laughs> what do you do about that? I'm like, uh, yeah, you lose. Well, so because there aren't a lot of teenagers that that return the 130s. Very well, yeah, well. I don't think he'd really quite reach that. Uh... He was he was smoking them. I did see him smoking Ooh. some big serves. Anyway, so here's the thing though. Let's yeah. go into kind of the story about taking him on a trip. So to kind of 
capsulize this for, for everyone. Here's this talented young man, and, and, and I knew in the back of my mind that someday he would be good. I had no idea he'd become number 10 on the world and become captain of the Russian Davis Cup team. But he, he had some issues. He had some anger issues, and he, he kind of reminded me of a younger me. So I suggested that we were going to do a road trip uh, to the Coeur d'Alene area, the North Idaho, where I grew up. I was always trying to get back to Idaho. So we packed up my wife's car. She had an older BMW a station wagon, and, and, and Dimitri came with us, and we traveled, and we went to North Idaho, and we didn't even pick up a racket. I taught him how to fly fish and showed him where, where I grew up. And I think during that time, I'm not saying he was too young to have an epiphany, but he realized there was more to life than just tennis. We did not pick up a racket the whole time we were in North Idaho because I think there might have been two courts up there. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, now, you know, Coeur d'Alene's picked up, University of Idaho, they have a great team, all that. But it wasn't our purpose. We were actually going up there just to get away and to check out the area. And when he came back, he was somewhat transformed and I was able to be part of his early development. So that's... Uh, my story with a very young Dimitri. Well, and so this is something about you, too, because, I mean, and I think it's interesting. I mean, it's hard to say, okay, uh, David Crane was, you know, Dimitri's savior. I mean, we don't want to go that no, far. No, but those no. kinds of experiences add up. And then I think it's really interesting who Dimitri has become. He's become somebody who is entertaining and yeah. lives a full life, and he does, he does things that... Yeah. How's it going? You sing it. <laughs> eight miles high, the birds. Okay. Eight yeah. miles high. Yeah. That's, my, that's my ringtone. Yeah. You want to shut it off? Huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. let's maybe we should shut that off. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're uh, gonna no, work. the other one, the other one. Well, oh, one. we're working with it here. We're working oh. with it, yeah. yeah. We're just okay. working with it. Eight yeah. miles high. Oh, right there. it's Dimitri's coach, Goron. He wants to have a chat what? with me. Yeah, just kidding. <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha. No, Boom. that was good. That was good. And yeah. you know what? Yeah. Hey, do you know what's right next to gullible in the dictionary? Mm. My picture. Oh, uh. uh, yeah. All right. So okay. back to, so now. Oh, look, gullible and gulliver as you, in travels. Okay, yeah, moving yeah. on. Moving okay, on. Okay. Yeah, All you right. have to forgive him. Yeah. He's kind of insane. Anyway. I so, have an active mind. Yeah. So, but so that I mean, that's those are those watershed moments. But as coaches, I think sometimes we put away the relationship building stuff and we go we you know we're just always focused on technique and yeah. you know strategy and you know you gotta win and all that stuff so so do you have other players that you have kind of stories of these moments where you got to them relationally well it's uh, you know i do but it's got to go way back uh for me when i was younger and and i left idaho to go back to Florida where I originally grew up and I was working for Mr. Ever. And I was able to, uh, to actually work with Clara, Chris's uh, sister. Mm -hmm. And it was, just, it was just an amazing moment for me to be able to, because you know, Chris had her own coaches, she had her dad, she had Jimmy. And, and you know, if I even looked at, at uh, Chris, you know, sideways, Jimmy kicked my butt. So I wasn't gonna work with Chris, right? Right. But I got a chance to, to work with, uh, with Claire a little bit, you know, and her other And then wait, there. okay, so Claire yeah. was like top 40? How high did she get? Uh, I don't think she got. She was she was inside she, the top hundred. I know top that. Top hundred. Sure. I don't know top forty, but she was she was okay. definitely top hundred. Yeah, but so, she's a so, so, she's a solid pro WTA player, you know. Yeah. So yeah. So what were the stories kind of related to her then? Well, you know, it was really tough. You know, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, and I do that sometimes. I can relate that to when I got a chance to work with Brett Connor, Jimmy's son in St. Louis, mm -hmm. when Brett was also twelve. Something about twelve year old, you know, at that point of time when they're coming into their own uh, in terms of, of, a, of a junior sense and they're not quite there yet. You know, you, you get them at this magical point in time. If you tell them to go stand on their head in a corner, they'll go, for how long? And that's really an important age to, to, to work with these young people, right? Mm -hmm. So going back to Claire, the thing, and, and then Jeannie was ahead of Claire. 
and, and Jeannie. Oh, Jeannie, Jeannie I think was be- yeah, was yeah. more successful than Jeannie Claire. Was I remember more Jeannie. Successful, okay, yeah. Uh, than Claire, and I worked with Jeannie just a little bit, but she had her own coach also. Mm-hmm. And but I got to work with Jeannie and Claire, but mainly Claire when she was about 12, 13. Okay, all right, all right. You know, and part of the uh, part of the the whole Everett uh, clan and process, and then to to fast forward when I was flying for TWA based out of St. Louis. I got to work with uh, Gloria Connors, Jimmy's mom, uh, at the uh, Ledoux Country Club, and Brett was there, and he was in one of my junior clinics, and I got to. And Brett's now a photographer, has his own website, does a really funny thing with Jimmy every year. Jimmy's now doing a cooking show. Yeah, talk to uh, them every, right there. every talk week. To that person right yeah, there. Yeah, that you person. See that, see that yeah, person right there. That yeah, person. Yeah. Talk to yeah. you or him or see that. You? See that. That's the person you're talking to right oh, there. Oh, that guy. Yeah, he's, he needs to lighten up just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boom. Just I knew this was going to be trouble. I knew this was going to be trouble. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. So, so we back were talking that. earlier about, and I don't. Well, we don't want to use the name, but mm-hmm. we both know sort of a tragic case, right? Yes. yes. And so, I mean, yeah. you know... And yes, to, to me, do. to me, we, you know, we, we rarely, but sometimes we have these opportunities to try to reach kids who are troubled. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, so once you kind of outline, I mean, let's first start with the fact that we're going to talk about a player who met their end and they, they uh, were irresponsible with the way they partied and it, and it did them in. Right. So, um, so, but, and we both had encounters with this person, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. let's talk a little bit about the struggle of working with somebody like that. Well, you know, it, it's unique in a way when you see yourself in someone and you see them in you. And, and it happened with this, with this young man. And he was an amazing, amazing talent. You know, I was friends with him, obviously, and his family, uh, it was it was an amazing process in the beginning, but I knew it was going to be difficult, you know. And I had somewhat of an impact, but not the impact that perhaps that I could have at the time. It, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, as we all say. Right. You know, and and I look back now, and I wish I could have done more, but I had so many people to work with at the time. You know, it, it was kind of like a a flash, if you will. Yeah, you know, working with this young individual. Well, and, and then and, I think it's interesting that Sean Lenahan is watching right now because she's she was working with me at the tournament where we had that young man, and he threw a racket harder than I've ever seen anyone throw a racket. So he was defaulted he did, immediately from the tournament. Yeah, and I was like, and so, but I began. I started to have empathy for him because I'm like, wow, this is a kid who really has some issues that need to be dealt with, Mm -hmm. but people are giving him a pass. It's like, well, he's a good player and he's got a future, so we'll just ignore the character issues. Yeah. So was but, there? But, but then again, yeah. that's not unique to. Oh, I can't see his name. Oh boy. Right. No. Yeah, but yeah. that's not wanna... unique to this particular individual because right. you saw that, and it wasn't just NorCal. I saw it in Florida. Right. When I left the Florida system, I was like, oh my god. I mean, the the coaches are teaching the kids anything close to call the ball out. I'm going, no, no, no. I want to change that, and to some degree, I did. And then I end up in Santa Cruz, and the same thing happens. I end up in San Francisco. I end up in Palo Alto at Stanford, and they're doing the same thing. Yeah. Right? And yeah, certain kids would be coddled. You bet. We've seen it all across the board, all the way from me, from South Florida uh, to uh, you know, to Northern California. Yeah. Uh, well, so and that's kind of what we're and see my, talking about. Yeah. I mean, part of my axe to grind, if you want to call it that, is that, is that, Part of the reason why U.S. tennis is not as successful as it could be is because we're not teaching enough character issues. I mean, we're we're promoting kids that have a severe character issue based simply on their skill level. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I mean, when you look at like when you look at the top players in the world right now, mm-hmm. especially on the men's side, they're all really nice people. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, and I think the women are a little bit splintered, mm-hmm. but you have these little groups of the gals that get along, right? Mm-hmm. And they right. practice together, and they're friends, and they do their social stuff and all that. Mm-hmm. But you, the top players in the world also have extremely well refined character. Right. They do. They do. And that's and part. That's of, yeah. Also, why 
they've arrived where they are today because they do have strong character you know and it's got and it's like I was trying to teach my one young player that sometimes sometimes you can take a sport and you can transcend that I mean for instance Arthur Ashe transcended our sport and I only got to meet him once I took a, a, a half hour uh, lesson with him and it wasn't even it wasn't even uh, okay. All right, all right. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. But wait. This is yeah. awesome. No, yeah. I'm glad you brought him up. Yeah. All right. So let's say let's talk about let's stop for a second and go. Who are your top five most influential people in tennis who've played tennis? All right. So give me your top five. They don't have to be in any order. Oh, without a doubt, okay. uh, uh, Chris Everett, Jimmy Connors. I've got to include Mr. Everett, not as a player, but as a teacher. He was my okay. original I hope mentor. Arthur, Arthur Ashe Arthur is going to be in there. Arthur okay. Ashe Number is five. in there. Oh, wow. Uh, I, I guess Billie Jean King. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. That's good. So yeah. I would, I would go yeah. Arthur Ashe, mm -hmm. Billie Jean King, mm -hmm. Vic Braden, Dennis Vandermeer. Okay, Dennis, yeah. Because, I mean, his the way he established the PTR to be worldwide and right, right. and have, you right. know, he's influenced more tennis coaches than, than maybe anyone ever. Right. Um, and, uh, wow, who's my fifth one? So, but those are the ones maybe that Dick lead. Maybe Dick Gould, maybe, yeah. Maybe Dick Gould. Yeah, there you go. Maybe Dick Gould. I got the because, word with Dick, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because, yeah. so... Um, so these people, though, right, all did something above and beyond. They mm -hmm. went. They went beyond just the sport. They had an influence on society overall. They I did. Mean, they did. You know, because and I, I don't think we can want to dig too deeply into that. But I think I think that you spurred that on by bringing up Arthur Ashe because I mean it it shows that's sort of the epitome of where the ideal we want to point people towards yeah. in terms of character. Are yeah. you going to have a positive impact on the planet? You know, so I'm trying to, <laughs> yeah, oh, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. No, you, you're doing fine. You're doing fine. So, um, all right. So do you have another kind of like a moment in time with a player where it was like, things were going this way. And then, then it was like, there was an intervention. Do you want to tell that one about that 14-year-old kid that was giving everybody all sorts of problems? Mm, which and then player you, was that? And then you stopped the car, and he said... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Do you want to tell that one? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. See, no bit, names on these no, things. No names on no these, names. yeah. Why don't yeah, you tell we, us that one? So, well, okay. we, we were at Nationals, okay? okay. And, and I, I, my number one player, he was a handful, but... It, Gosh, the kid's only like 13 years old. We're, you know, we're representing NorCal. We're in the South. We're in Columbia, South Carolina, and uh, you know, it's it's a big, it's a special event. You know, and I and I had a player, and I had my own rental car at the time, and I just I was taking him to one of our matches, and we just we, we pulled over, and I said, you know, we have, need to have just a little bit of a of a chat and his eyes got real big like wait 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 yeah, back yeah, up for a second because yeah, yeah. you told me some other backgrounds that came yeah. before that let's let's give the setup on that well i mean there was kind of a handoff that took place the night before well, there, right there was kind of a handoff that, okay. that took place the night before and and at the bequest of a really good friend of mine could i please work with this player and my whole approach to everything that I've done in tennis is a little more compassion, if you will, you know, instead of the X's and O's. Because by that time, you get to nationals, you know how to hit a forehand, you know how to serve, you, you know the strategy. So it was more than that. It was basically, and it wasn't an epiphany per se, it was just saying, look, there's more to life than just tennis. And we're here, we're representing NorCal and we're representing our sport so we really have to be in charge of our own character and right. basically that was our that was my whole mantra and by the time we got to the to the tournament he was fine he settled down you know and sometimes you have to approach right. these junior players okay. on so a you're, different level so you're driving you're driving yeah. and you're yeah. having this talk yeah and then i'd say okay we got to pull over i got to have a talk and he looked at me like oh my god are you going to 
put me over your knee and, and you're going to spank my butt? Are you going to whip my ass? And I go, no, of course not, but we're going to have a little chat here. Well, are we going to get to the match? I said, well, that depends. <laughs> no, I mean, it's got to so, be yeah. it's got to be an unnerving feeling of you're driving along with your coach and yeah. all of a sudden the car's pulling over and you're like, uh-oh, yeah. what's yeah. going to happen next? Yeah, is he going to no, throw me that's... out? Is he going to make me walk to my match? And I go, no, but we have to have a little chat yeah, here. Yeah, everything. I mean, Look around Uh-oh, you. Oh, we it. stopped the car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look around you. I'll tell you another epiphany for my players because um, my, my dear, dear friend and mentor, Ken DeHart, and he's a big influence on me too. Uh, we were in Columbia, South Carolina, when they were still, okay, flying the Confederate flag, which is a, a, of some notable, uh, you know, importance, you know, in our history, right? And th- most of these kids have not been out of the Silicon Valley. Mm. And so I took them, I took them to the Capitol and, and we took a tour and, and it opened their eyes. So, you know, when you go to something like this was junior team tennis nationals, it was like going to the Olympics. You know, we had our own flag. We had our own banner. We wore our own blazers. We marched in the parade. Uh, my one young player, I volunteered him. Cameron DeHart ended up standing up and singing the national anthem That's in front nice. of everybody. Wow. And I'm standing next to him, and he's like looking at me like, what did you get me into? And he did. And that particular time, the first time our team from AVAC, from San Jose, was at Nationals. The first time ever. There were 64 teams. There were 500 players. There were 200-some coaches we were voted the Spirit uh, Award for the whole tournament, dude. And somebody that right here uh, was voted want, was voted coach of, uh, of the tournament. Yeah, it wasn't me. Yeah, yeah Process, get, wait, it wasn't me. It was Process that, of elimination. It was that wait, DC guy that always has it a. It was David oh, Crane. Oh, oh God, did that a, hurt? That's a good punch. Yeah, you do it again. I'm gonna knock you off your chair. Okay, Just whatever. Kidding. Okay, Moving whatever. On. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, no, dude, that is so amazing. Yeah, that was and you know what? Cool. Hey, I I get I get real misty eyed. I start to get a leaky eye over sportsmanship award stuff. I, to, we we got you know sportsmanship I mean? award. We got spirit of the whole tournament. Right. And I guess we felt guy bad for the old guy. I so, wasn't even that old then, was I? I'm old no, now. No, but, uh, you're not older. that old. <laughs> no, well. Yeah. D- David, in case you hadn't noticed, is like the most enthusiastic tennis pro in the world. No. And whenever you talk to him on the phone, he sounds like he's he's fourteen years old himself. So I kind of no, like I that. spent I spent time so, around Wayne so Bryan. Moral, <laughs> so moral of the story. Yeah. Moral of the story or is Patton, if yeah. you if you uh, pull over the car and look for a really big stick, then yeah. your team can win most spirited and yeah and uh, do really well. So that was somewhat. And of you a, can get coach of the year. Well, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> So. I, I think they just kind of rolled everything together. Like, here, you guys take it, you know. That, so no, that is a uh, really great story. And so, um, is, 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 do we have more that we can build on there? Is, there? is there more there? From that particular standpoint, I, I mean, it, it, it opened the door for us. And we realized that, I mean, we had a really tough, tough go the first time we were there. But we came back, uh, we went uh, three years in a row. Uh, different players, of course. Uh, and it was just a, it was a wonderful, magical event. For was these this kids junior to... team tennis? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. so it's junior yeah, it team took... tennis. So your club won sectionals. So we won three we years basically... in a row and yes. went to nationals. Yeah, so we three years in a row. Yeah, won NorCal. We won, you know. Uh, That's we won really Reno. hard we won to do. The... It's really tough to do. Yeah. And then with the other team I was associated with in 2008 was very, very different. We had a group of young boys, all from the Silicon Valley. Uh, led by a young uh, young man by the name of uh, Cameron Klinger, and he was my number one player, our number one player. And Manny Fernandez and I had a team of boys. Are you ready for this? We were 150 and 0. That will never happen again wow. in my lifetime. And we we became national champions. Uh, <laughs> and it was just uh, it was an amazing road with these with these young young guys who weren't even men yet, right? Uh, and uh, they were just they refused to lose. And we would go out on the court, and you know, we would bring hack and sacks, and and I would always have a frisbee, and I had a uh, I had a Nerf football because you know I uh-huh. played football in college at Idaho, yeah. and we're always just doing different stuff, and and I would See, play okay. music, and it just keep and them keep that, them loose, keep them that light. That stuff yeah. is so underrated. So you're building a team, right? You're yeah. creating you're yeah. creating unity. 
yeah. through engagement and other stuff. And then they're also kind of getting relaxed because I think hacky sack is a great thing because because it gives you some lower body flexibility and yeah. agility, yeah. right? Yeah, we some, did that at Davis Cup too. I got yeah. to be part of uh, the U.S. Davis Cup here in, in Boise, Idaho. Uh, that was really, really special. Awesome. And, okay, so yep. now, so let's wrap it up. So yep. here's what we're going to yep. do. So give me two or three takeaways that you want to drive home from this talk what are the what are the num the big things that you want people to get here oh aj chabria is watching i hope i'm saying his last name right okay hey guys i come out and i, I come and hassle him on his show every once in a while well the, you know the, the big thing guy. from from what i've seen and what i learned you know i came along at a unique time uh, when tennis was literally, you know, with Borg and Connors and McEnroe and those guys, we they were treated like rock stars. And then when I was flying for TWA, I got to fly these guys around and be with them and be part of that. And, and I saw the competitive uh, pressure they were under, and, and particularly with Andre Agassi and what he was going through at the time. And in my own experience, in retrospect, I said, you know, I want to just keep it nice and loose and light for these kids because tennis isn't the whole world, but it can open up the world. Okay, so, so if you perspective. use it that way, perspective. Awesome, Keep all right. Keep things in perspective. What's right? number two, yes. Uh, my dad was US Air Force for 33 years, and he used to say something, and I, I didn't get it, and I finally get it now. Maintain an even strain, right? It's right, it's right out of the right stuff. Just steady on. That's and a great movie. Yeah, that was a great movie. And, yeah. and I, I finally got it. He also used to say something, dollar waiting on a dime. I still don't know what that means. I'm a dollar and I'm waiting on you and you're a dime. Is that what that means? Yeah. I'm the important one and you're holding me up. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. Why, I, wait a minute. Why I'm started, waiting for you. Why I'm the one that got to be I, yeah. get somewhere to make something happen. And you're screwing me up. You're well, would you get 10%. back in the car, please? Or <laughs> I'm going to pull over again. <laughs> All right. So, so th th yeah, that, my whole takeaway with this is that, hey, these kids have enough pressure, you know, and, and yeah, a lot of them are talented. There's only one Jimmy Connors. There's only one Roger Federer. There's only one Bill Patton. You know what I'm saying? So be who you are, you know, and celebrate that. And coaches, you know, not so much pressure. Please. Okay. okay. And so here's my takeaway yeah. from that. Yeah. You really key in on the uniqueness of the people that you're working with and exactly. help draw out yeah. their best. All right. Yeah. yeah. Number three. Yeah. What's the third takeaway? Uh, is it lunch yet? Uh, yeah. Let's see. Okay. The, we're the done. Sun's out. Yeah. I think <laughs> we're done. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be part of your show, uh, Bill Patton and and Greg Patton. Uh, if you're watching, he won't I, watch this. Okay. I don't know if you're watching. Uh, I'm sorry. I sent Bill to your house yesterday. Okay. That's, bye. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. That's a wrap. Thanks okay. for watching. Thank and you, everybody. If you ever, uh, yeah, get in touch with David Crane here in Eagle, Idaho. And you can find him on Facebook pretty easily. Thanks, guys. C-R-A-I-N. Yeah, like brain, but with a C on it. See you, bye.